There are planets and moons in our solar system, as well as getting some of their heat from the sun, also seem to have some heat source within the very structure of the planet or moon themselves, some form of internal heating. Now, since heat is a form of energy, where are these bodies getting all that energy from, and will it run out? Well, taking the topic of running out of heat, like many things, it all depends. The key factors here are size and mass. Now, the greater an object's mass, the more heat it can actually store. The greater the surface area, the quicker it can actually lose heat to the outside or to the rest of the solar system. Although Mars, the diameter, is about half that of the Earth's, the mass of Mars is only about 10% of the Earth's, yet its surface area is generally about 38% about of that of Earth. So any heat within Mars will be lost far quicker than the heat that's being lost from the Earth. Now with mass also comes gravity. The more gravity you have, the more things are crushed together, which creates pressure. When you put things under pressure, they release heat energy. However, unless you're going to add significant amounts of new matter to increase the mass, this pressure energy is basically a one-time deal and will gradually lost over time. The other energy from the formation of planetary bodies is kinetic energy, meaning all the pieces of planets and moons were moving when they fell into that kind of protoplanetary body. Again, that motion energy is converted into heat energy. Although there are some new bits constantly falling into planets and moons, really tiny compared to the mass of the planets, they hardly add any new energy to the body at all. So in general, we have some extremely hot moons and planets when they're actually being formed, which slowly cool over time, with some of them cooling quicker than others. Now, if these sources were the only way that planets were actually heated up, generally be considerably cooler than they currently are. So something else has to be going on. Well, gravity, as well as pulling an object together, also has the effect of putting bodies in orbit of each other. Not all objects move at the same speed, and some objects, like moons, orbit round a planet, whilst at the same time orbiting both planet and moon, actually orbiting around the sun. On Earth, sometimes the moon and the sun are on the same side of the planet, and sometimes they're on opposite sides. And this change in gra gravitational pull on the Earth, they change their orbital positions, not only causes the tides to go up and down, but also the rock to be very slightly moved up and down. This squeezing and relaxing of the Earth releases some heat energy, much like if you squeeze and release a squash ball several times in quick succession. Of course, the greater the change in gravitational pull, and the smaller the mass of the object that's being acted on, the more noticeable this tidal heating is actually going to be. Now, a prime example of this is Io, the innermost of the Galilean moons of Jupiter, and probably the most geologically active object in our solar system. As well as being pulled by Jupiter, Io has also been pulled by the outer moons of Europa, Ganymede and Callisto. Now, relative size and distance from orbital patterns of these bodies cause Io to orbit a fairly irregular distance from Jupiter, sometimes quite close in and sometimes a greater distance. This again squeezes and relaxes Io, resulting in what could be referred to as a tide of rock on Io, as the surface can rise and fall by about 100 metres during an orbit of Jupiter. And this in turn creates a huge amount of tidal heating in Io, which will continue for as long as Io maintains its regular orbit around Jupiter. This tidal heating, however, isn't enough of a factor to keep the Earth as hot and geologically active as it is. For that, we need another factor. It's down to the elements that actually make up the Earth. Now, while a lot of the Earth is made from elements like oxygen, aluminium, iron and silicon, there's substantial quantities of other elements, some of which are subject to radioactive decay, like potassium, thorium and uranium. And these can have extremely long half-lives. It means that even though in part of the Earth for billions of years, 
is still decaying. As they decay, they release energy which goes into keeping our Earth warm. In fact, the warmth of these elements is likely to keep the core of the Earth molten up until the point at which the sun actually dies.